Hello, my beautiful YouTube friends. So today we're gonna to talk about does your PhD supervisor hate you and how you can be the perfect student for them. It's not as weird as it sounds actually. The relationship with your PhD supervisor is gonna be the one thing that determines essentially your success during your PhD or your postdoc research. And it is gonna be the thing that makes it good or bad in terms of the journey. Like, it all comes down to human relationships and arguably, supervisors are human too. Um, and so it's about forming a good relationship even with the most difficult, introverted, ego-driven people that I think I've ever come across, and that's the good old academic researcher. Um, so in this video, what I wanna do is talk you through all of the reasons why you should sort of like work well with your PhD supervisor, but also make you understand where they're coming from. Having been on the other side of the fence for a little bit during my postdoc and having students and interns work uh, on projects that I was uh, directing, then, um, you know, it just, it just is a little bit more challenging when you're a supervisor and it's important that PhD students know what's going on. So I'll be doing that. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about the uh, best ways that you can become the perfect PhD student. But by perfect, I don't mean just like sucking up and doing everything they say, uh, but much rather, you know, building a great relationship and really understanding them and uh, making sure that you can kind of use a couple of little Jedi mind tricks on them so you still get to say, get to do the things you want during your research career. All right then, uh, let's get into it. So the first thing that I think you should do is really try to understand where your PhD supervisor is coming from. Now here's one little caveat that I think is so important. If you are being bullied, there is no excuse for it at all. That needs to be shut down immediately and you need to go see um, their boss, the dean, or whoever you can, a wellness counselor in your university, to shut that shit down immediately. Like that is not not good. So go check out my other YouTube video on, I think it's like toxic supervisors and you'll be talked through um, some strategies in there. But if your PhD stupid, uh, supervisor, stupidizer, if your PhD supervisor is a little bit quirky, then you're in the right place. Um, now let's think about these people. These people have got a PhD, they've sort of progressed up the academic ladder, and now they find themselves in a situation where their boss is the university. And like all my other videos, what does the university care about? It's not even papers. Like in their career, they care about getting papers in their H index for promotion, blah, blah, blah. The university, right, cares about money. That is it, that is all that it comes down to. So they have to bring in money either by teaching students, so sort of like running first year labs or um, first year courses, and you know, students are a bit of a cash cow for the university, especially international students, um, and then they can also bring in money through grant applications. Now, grants, have got in Australia at the moment about a 10% success rate. So imagine that, imagine that your happiness and your job depends on keeping your boss happy and you know you've got a 10% chance of getting a grant that will bring in a significant amount of money. And we're not talking just like 60 grand here, we're talking about millions of dollars that they need to bring into the university just to, just to kind of keep their job and make everyone happy. And the thing is, once they get one grant, that's great, they're working on the next one. So it's like this, it's just always uh, just never ending. And one thing that I always thought about when I was in academia was like, if I looked up at, at the sort of higher ups in academic, I was like, your job looks like it sucks. Like you have no autonomy, even though it looks autonomous, you're just begging for money all the time and it looks tiring. So remember that they're doing that. They are only sort of concerned with bringing in money to the university and showing that they're valuable and they should be kept. Now the moment that you're kind of always 
nervous about bringing in money, losing your job, being seen as not productive or not valuable, then immediately your headset goes into kind of survival mode. And that's what brings out, I think, the worst aspects in some very nice people when they become academic. So it is incredibly competitive and you are always compared to someone else. Like even when you're getting grants, you are compared to someone else's track record. They even have to do this thing, I think it's called in Australia, rope. But it's essentially where you talk about your experience, how much money you've bought in. And once you start bringing in that money, like sex, success breeds success. But in the early days, it is incredibly challenging to build up that momentum. And at any moment, you could have a couple of dry years and then you may be fired. At least that has been my experience with some people is like, if they're not on rolling contracts or, or, or permanent tenure track positions, um, they just lose their job after all those years. So that is the sort of, sort of uh, pressure they feel. So uh, competitive, yes. Also, these people, probably need a little bit of, uh, of training in terms of controlling their ego. Now, when the worst aspects come out in someone, it is their ego which says they should be getting more money, that they deserve more, that they're super competitive, so this person is worse than them and I'm better than them. And I've seen quite nice people turn into assholes over a relatively small issue or amount of money. Like one of my supervisors, I was like, can I use your lab for the afternoon? And she went, no. And I was like, all right. And then later on during that day, she realized, I think she reflected on, uh, on how weird and rude that was. And uh, she said, I don't get any money for using my lab, but she signed the paperwork and gave it to me. But she just needed to tell me that money was really the, the issue. It wasn't about me using the lab. It was the fact that she wasn't getting compensated for me being in there and potentially using some of her uh, uh, like chemicals or whatever. Um, the third thing, is that these people have no formal training at all in terms of leadership. Like they have courses at, at different universities and you know how to be a supervisor, how to navigate, blah, blah, blah. But their emotional intelligence is not developed by the university. You know, becoming a good leader is leading from the front, is creating opportunities for the people that work under you. It's about uh, taking a step back and ensuring that everyone that works uh, kind of under you um, has everything they need to do their job properly, not sit there and demand, not sort of like complain at them if they're not doing their job to the way you want to do it. And, you know, what you've got to do in leadership is these people have got to remember that they actually work for you. Like if you're a PhD student and you've got a supervisor, you should actually be demanding of them like, hey, I really need this, I really need this support, this is what you can do to help me. But they seem to forget that. So universities do not provide any leadership training. And so these people, you know, maybe their default is just to be rude. And also a lot of people uh, emulate the sort of leaders that they've had in the past. And old school academic uh, supervisors were pretty hardcore and cutthroat. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to wait a few generations for that to kind of really get out. But so uh, yeah, leadership, they kind of suck at it because no one is a natural leader. You know, you have to be in, you have to go out and you have to develop those skills. And without, uh, without the university kind of prompting them, they're not gonna do it because it doesn't bring in money. Uh, so yes, and also the last thing is given all of the above reasons, their mental health must be incredibly fragile. Now imagine waking up all the, all the time thinking, well, I need to bring in millions of dollars, otherwise my job isn't a success and I'm not gonna be valuable to the university. Um, and so these are the sort of people you're dealing with. So your PhD supervisor almost certainly doesn't hate you, but they have a lot of weird shit going on in their own lives, which means that they're just not resilient enough to deal with the smallest of issues because they have so much going on themselves. So that's the first thing. That's why you need to understand these people. So hopefully you can see from all of that, the answer to does anyone hate you? Well, probably not. Like unless you are an absolute asshole uh, during your PhD and you don't do any work and you're always demanding and you never deliver on what you say you're doing, you have no interest in learning. Like those are the things that make 
sort of PhD students really stand out in terms of being poor PhD students. And unless you're doing that, your PhD stu uh, supervisor definitely doesn't hate you. Um, in fact, they are probably uh, they're probably just so wrapped up in their own issues that they can't see beyond um, beyond what they need to do and anything else outside of that just causes them to enter a fit of panic which you may interpret as uh, as hate or them not liking you, but it's certainly not the case. And so let's talk about now some little communication things that you can do um, and things that I've learned along the way that can really help with the relationship between you and your supervisors and a couple of little Jedi mind tricks that I've used in the past that I think have really worked well. So the first thing to do with your supervisor is to properly listen. And by properly listen, I mean like, don't just have this like narrative running in your head while they're speaking, understand them, seek to understand. The first thing to great communication and kind of understanding where this person is coming from is to, is to, is to listen to understand, seek to understand their position. So if they ask you to do something or you're like, oh, they're being like bossy or like think about, okay, why are they being bossy? Why are they asking me to do this thing which is not related to my PhD? Um, is it something I actually need to do? Or is there something else behind that? And you can continue to ask questions. Like you, you don't have to agree with what they say, but you can try to understand and you do that by asking questions of them. So while they're saying, oh, I need you to do this thing, you're like, well, what, what part of that is most important to you? you know, what's the most important outcome for this? Why have we entered this new thing? Um, you know, I, I just need to understand a little bit more so I can do a good job. Essentially is, is the, the sort of tact you need to take with PhD supervisors because these people want to be listened to. They're not listened to as much as you think they are. They're always being, they're always competitive with each other. And so they just want to be listened to and understood as does everyone in the world. And so by trying to understand and also parroting back and saying, well, this is what it looks like to me. Is that correct? You know, like that is the way you get rapport with PhD supervisors. That is how you build a relationship and making sure you ask those questions until you really understand. Like even if you ask questions for 15 minutes, just do that. Well, why is that important? How do we get there? What does that look like? Who, what, when, you know, who do we need to ask to get there? Um, all the questions, who, what, when, why, how? And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll slowly sort of uncover the real story because their mood, their, their, their thing you're interpreting as hate for you is probably hidden behind other issues and you just need to kind of work out, okay, well, where are we going and what is the real reason uh, we're, you're asking me to do this or we're changing or, you know, you're coming across as mean. There's an excellent book called uh, Never Split the Difference. I'll put a link in the description below, but uh, it is an, a perfect place where for you to learn, so essentially to negotiate with your PhD supervisor. Each interaction you have, every meeting is a negotiation. You have an idea of what you want to do, they have an idea of what they want to do. By understanding what they want first, um, you can then sort of lead and direct by agreeing with them and saying, yes, look, I completely see why that's important, I'll do that, but also this is very important to me. And that to and fro and that kind of like communication is so important. Um, if you're completely just thrown by what they say or you're frustrated, um, the number one thing I learned from this book is this question, well, how would I do that? So, you know, you don't ask it with that tone, that was kind of a bit, rude, I guess, but you can ask it like, well, how would I do that? How how would I do what you're asking? How would I uh, get around those problems? And um, just by digging deeper and digging deeper, it really helps you kind of negotiate with them on different aspects. And so yes, your PhD supervisor doesn't hate you. Um, they're just probably a very poor communicator. I hope that that video just made you realize what the PhD supervisor is going through. Um, it's, 
you know, it can be really hard to understand someone else's point of view and jumping to conclusions about how they feel about you is only natural. But they have their own little weird ass story going on and uh, you need to understand that if you're going to work well with them and keep that relationship happy. You know, this isn't about accepting bullying. It's not about um, accepting uh, sort of poor treatment, but you can help build rapport, you can help grow that relationship by seeking to understand before you, uh, you know, present anything. These people just want to be loved. They want to be loved like anyone else, but the harsh environment of academia has turned them into these uh, egocentric, highly competitive, fragile human beings and uh, yeah, they don't hate you. Like I said, they're just very poor communicators sometimes. And you know, in this video, I've talked about academics. I've seen some great examples, but for some reason, I've also seen a lot, like the majority of people fall into the kind of, uh, you know, mean academic uh, stereotype. And that's because of the system they're working in. It's a bit gross. So if you're new to this channel, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification because my mission is to make your PhD and your research career work for you um, and no one else. And so I'm gonna share the tips and tricks and insider secrets that I've learned from the past, what, like 11 years in research. And uh, I hope that I can share that with you and you can benefit from it. Okay, until next time, I'll see you in the next video.